I'm Jeff Horrocks and I'm currently Professor of Comparative Philology at Cambridge and one of my jobs is to teach the history and structure of the Greek language including of course the Mycenaean Greek that was revealed when the Linear B script was deciphered. But I have a particular connection to this because John Chadwick, the author of the book The Decipherment of Linear B, and Michael Ventris's collaborator was in fact my director of studies when I was an undergraduate and my PhD supervisor and he was a great mentor in the early stages of my career. Linear B is one of two linear scripts which the great British archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans discovered when he was excavating the site of Knossos on Crete at the beginning of the 20th century. It was clear from the very beginning from the content of these tablets that they were essentially bureaucratic in character. There were little pictures of various individuals or animals or commodities with numbers. So clearly there was some kind of administrative record. Um, what nobody knew, of course, was what exactly was being counted or why it was being counted. I think it would be fair to say that the process of decipherment depended crucially on work done by a number of Americans before Michael Ventris really got stuck in. And then, most importantly of all, he built crucially on the work of another American, Alice Kober, who'd noticed that in all these tablets there were quite a lot of words which kept repeating themselves but with slightly different endings. And she deduced from this that these were probably inflectional endings of the sort you find in Latin or Greek where the function of a word in a sentence depends on the ending it has. So what she did was collect these words into sets called Cobas triplets. So she began the process of a systematic analysis and it was this that Michael Ventris latched onto. And what he did was collect more and more materials whereby he could build up a grid such that he had columns and rows and he could say, basically, I don't know what the values here are, but I do know that all of these sounds begin with the same consonant and all of these signs contain the same vowel. So that whenever it was possible to substitute real values, you would have a whole set of signs deciphered simultaneously. And then he made himself the brilliant extra step of looking at the tablets and seeing that sets from particular places often shared what seemed like a common heading. And he made the assumption that this heading was a place name. And he then said, let's suppose from this place, these are the place names which are most likely to be used. And he tried substituting values for the place names into the grid. And of course, once he'd done that, he had a whole set of values for all the other consonants because of the way the grid was set up. And then he started substituting these into the text themselves. And by doing this, um, eventually lots and lots of Greek-looking words started emerging. And it was at this point that he consulted John Chadwick and John Chadwick got involved as a resident British expert on early Greek philology.